have been visiting the Science Museum for many years and it was always my secret place, anti-design place. When I come to the Salone, there's design everywhere and I used to come here to get away from it. I've always been inspired by the, um, the technology aspects of the museum, right? The way that technology has changed the way everything around us is, you know. So, I think it's an inspirational backdrop and this year we were looking for somewhere different to show and there's very few buildings in Milan that haven't been used for design so it's kind of great to open up and show everybody um, this fabulous space. It started off with some curation and now it's kind of pretty much the whole world of design here. Some of them are, are, are collaborations, joint ventures with companies, so like with Trump, for instance, and Carpigiani, and Nokia here. So Nokia are, have, have made a, the restaurant with us. Um, other people are friends that um, share some of the uh, interests in, in design and technology together. And other people are just um, people that heard about it and contacted me. Well, we, 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 um, our company produces a lot of lighting products and too often we talk a lot about the shape of the object or how it looks in an interior, but we don't really talk enough about the light that it makes. And I think for a lot of people, um, don't feel very expert in terms of how you use lighting and what effects you can produce and the rest of it. So, and also because all of the bulbs and the technology is changing all the time. It's often very difficult to keep up with what an LED will do or compact fluorescent or halogen. Or, so people are very confused. So we want to try and talk about luminosity in a very simple way and really dem demystify it. The, the Peg collection is a, a basic collection for contract furniture like a pub or a, a coffee house, you know, so that it's not too designed, it's quite, quite plain, it's quite simple, it's very neutral um, and you can, you can use it in big quantities without it looking too busy or too designed, you know, so it's an anti-design, under-designed object, so try not to be fashionable, not trendy, just basic. Uh, utility furniture, quite good for a place like this where there's a lot of decor to have something quite plain, no? I think, you know, design is, is a great um, trade, it's, but people think it's a bit like sculpture, that people are only interested in making a shape. But I think a designer has to be interested also in the material, in the production process, in the price, in the packaging, in the communication of the object as well, right? Um, because design is also about improving and simplifying things. It's not just about making shapes, right? So I think a good designer should really be interested in every single aspect of a, of a product, not just its shape. I spend a lot of time thinking about the production process because most designers work for other companies, many companies, I work for my own company, so I have to know how to make things, right? So um, I'll be, always be interested in those things, the, the fundamentals of how an object is made, but I try and apply it to as many different fields as possible. So now I'm interested also in architecture, we're interested in food, we have a restaurant in London that we've brought here to Milan. I'm interested also in, in um, smaller objects, the everyday objects as well. And then I'll be interested in art, fashion, engineering, invention and, and I don't know, aeroplanes maybe, who knows? <laughs> I've designed a chair and I've designed a lamp that are made by digital manufacturing, right? So I think the advantage 
is really here we're able to do instant manufacturing. So something I designed in London last week, I can make in Milan today and I can make in New York tomorrow. Yeah? And I can make one or I can make 100,000 all using the same processes. Um, and I think this is completely different from what it was like to make industrially produced products when I started out. So I think the distance between the designer and the consumer is so much closer now. And what I'm demonstrating is how easy you can um, get products to market. So instantly take the machine to the consumer. So I'm, I'm a very generous person and I like to give things away like Robin Hood, you know, so I take from the rich and I give to the poor people of Milan, yeah? Free design. And so the idea really is that um, it's a cheap way of being popular. <laughs> and it, it means that you, you have a real accessibility to design. I think the idea is really to demonstrate the speed with which we can make things now. And also to try and create a bit of a buzz around a new product which we're trying to launch. You know? Well, I'm making a product that you can use in many different ways. So when you get this thing home, it's been made specially for putting in your bag, so it takes no space. But when you get it home, you just fold it up, and everybody can fold it in a different way, right? So I might fold it this way for, for, for my, my uh, sitting room, use it like this, or I might fold it the other way, you know, and make a unique product, right? So everybody can make their own Tom Dixon lamp. I'm not so interested in making the perfect products. I'm quite interested in allowing other people to adapt it themselves. You know, I'd much rather not, you know, I never finish things off anyway, so it's quite nice for other people to do that.